Okay, good morning. Let us resume our discussion. So what were we discussing in the last class? Any of you can quickly tell a couple of points. Uh, among all the computer vision tasks, uh, the basic common thing is the features. Now for features, we either do template matching or finding corresponding points. So we came to the conclusion that finding corresponding or the region of interest points is important and that we concluded with the corner points. So for finding corner points, we discussed various methods which include a pixel difference method that is using Morvac operator. And then we moved to much better approach of using patch of pixels using Harris corner detection. And then we derived the Harris corner approach. through the Right, very good. We have seen in the last class that actually for finding corner points, the points that will have the variance in all direction uh, high, okay, or the minimum variance in all direction itself has to be higher than a threshold to declare it as a corner point. Because if you move from one direction from a uh, from that point in any of the directions, at least there should be some reasonable variance to note that distinctly from the neighborhood. That is ensured once we see that the variance in moving uh, from that point in any of the directions has high variance. That is ensured by calculating a covariance matrix around that point, okay, considering the patch around that point. And that is effectively done in the Harris scanner detector. And further, taking the covariance, the um, variance directions from the covariance matrix can be effectively done by eigenvalues. So these eigenvalues will indicate how much is the variance in the maximum spread direction or the maximum variance direction and the minimum variance direction. Okay. And hence the minimum variance direction that is minimum of lambda one comma lambda two itself has to be greater than a threshold to declare it as a corner point. This is one way of declaring it as a corner point. But this requires computation of the eigenvalues which is also a kind of costly or time taking because getting the matrix determinant and trace are simple, but calculating the eigenvalues of a matrix requires AX minus um, lambda I equating lambda uh, X equating to zero and so on, right? So A minus lambda I into X equal to zero. So that, that brings in reasonable computations. So to overcome that, what Harris has proposed is, Equivalently finding out the minimum of lambda one, lambda two greater than threshold can also be done equivalently by taking the product of eigenvalues and the sum of eigenvalues and putting a measure based on product and sum of the eigenvalues. Now, such that, see if the eigenvalues are, one of them is smaller, much smaller than others. Okay, then we can see that this product will be much smaller. Okay, still the sum will be high. If one of them is high, if both of them are smaller, then R will be smaller. Okay, if you see this measure, this measure is such that if one of the lambda 1 and lambda 2, if you see one of them is very high, the other one is very low, then what will happen is this will be higher than this. Right? So if in that case, what will happen? This will be negative. So if R being negative means that one of the eigenvalue is very high, other eigenvalue is very low. What does it mean? If one eigenvalue is high, another eigenvalue is low. What does it mean? Can anybody tell? So that means if you have actually a uh, any point somewhere where you are, if you move in one direction, the variance is very low. If you move in other direction, variance is very high. Okay. What does it mean? Very low means it can be zero itself. Variance in one direction, if I move, there is no variance. That is the intensity variations is almost nil. That is zero. If you move in other direction, intensity variation is very high, probably 255. Okay, so what is the scenario of this? In one direction, if I move, there is a good transition, okay, or sudden change. In other direction, if I move, there is no change, not much change. When will it happen? During edges. At edges. Okay. So at edges, as you can see, so if you have actually an edge, where the uh, one, if you have a, say all white here and black here, what will happen if I move along the edge, then along the edge, there is no gradient, okay? And hence there is no variation. But if you move across the edge, what will happen? The gradient is very high or the variation in intensities from this patch to this patch, if you see, it will be very high. 
okay patch around this to patch around this if you see it will be very high is it not even patch around this patch around this intensity variations is very high but if i see patch here and the patch here okay the variation will not be high this patch and this patch okay so that's usually is the case around the edges so if r is negative it means that it is an edge okay and if r is smaller that means both lambda 1 and lambda 2 in both direction the variation is very small okay then if r is smaller what does it mean in whatever direction you are moving okay the variance is very low in that case what is it a corner or not a corner that means say you are here if you move in either direction the lambda 1 lambda 2 both are small it means that if you move in either direction the variance or the intensity variations are small is it a corner or not a corner not a corner yeah it's not a corner okay uh, whereas if r is higher that means if you move in from here in any direction the variation is high okay here whatever we have seen on the edge r is negative okay on the uh, in uniform region r is small okay and uh, then in the uh, mm, uh, whenever you have actually at the corner the uh, variation in all directions is high and then the r value will be high so that's how you can establish whether it is a corner or not just based on the uh, value of r is this clear and for finding this value of r what you can do is you need not even compute the eigen values you can use directly the determinant and trace of the matrix m and compute whether r c whether identify whether it's a corner or not which is much simpler than identifying a uh, or finding out the eigen values and then figuring out this is what is being suggested by harris corner detector mm, so any questions on this in this derivation or in uh, the discussion of harris corner detector mm, if there are no questions what i will do is i will uh, take you through some of the slides and these slides are from uh, professor uh, uh, mubarak shah video lectures so these will help us uh, to visualize the things better especially in terms of corner detection and uh, understanding the Har harris corner detection detection okay sir uh, what does uh, those eigen vectors represent on an image yeah so uh, uh, for what are we finding eigen vectors first of all uh, the covariance matrix which we get uh, oh, uh, for the intensity using the intensity yes so are we finding for the whole image at once uh, single co single uh, covariance matrix or at only at a given point uh, at a given point a small patch yeah you are we are finding at a small patch we are trying to see how it displaces okay from given point to the neighboring points right and then all the neighboring points and then see these say each displacement we are saying it as u comma v okay u comma v is the displacement and at i of x comma y we are trying to see how much the displacement is okay you uh, mm, for each u comma v okay based on this we are finding out the covariance matrix based on this we are getting the covariance matrix is it correct or not yes sir yes. so what does this covariance matrix so, so this is equivalent to decomposing it as uv a matrix m uv that's what we have seen before right what does this matrix m this will have uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 and so on what does this matrix m represent now it's of course it can be considered as a covariance matrix but covariance matrix representing what E, in different different scenarios covariance matrix can different dif represent different things okay here what does this two cross two covariance matrix represents it shows what is the overall variance in intensity distribution around that point okay this covariance matrix say especially if we consider it as say usually covariance matrix we consider it as sigma 1 square okay sigma 1 2 sigma r sigma x square sigma x y okay sigma y x sigma y square okay in, if you consider x direction and y direction what does it indicate is intensity variations in x direction 
variance in x direction, variance in y directions, covariance. That means in all the other directions. So they together in uh, in x and y direction, what is the variation? Okay, that's what it indicates. This covariance matrix. Now, what it does it indicate is overall in around that point. What is the intensity distribution in terms of variation? Okay, with respect to the point where we are. That's what is being captured by M. These eigenvalues now, what does these eigenvalues now represent? See, in what may happen, intensity variation in this direction, x if you consider x direction and y direction. In, see, if this is the case, that means intensity variation in this direction is very high, in this direction is very low. Then lambda 1 represents this. Okay, lambda 2 represents this. If you assume that lambda 1 is the highest eigenvalue, lambda 2 is the lowest eigenvalue. So what it represents is in the maximal variation direction. Okay, what is the, uh, how much is the variation? It is being captured by lambda 1. In the orthogonal direction, usually that will be the minimum variation direction. How much is the uh, industry variations? That is being captured by lambda. Hmm, is this clear? So in case if industry distribution is uniform, okay, in that case, actually what will happen? Lambda 1, lambda 2 will be equal. Okay, lambda 2, lambda 1. Okay, they will be equal. Industry distribution, if it is something like this, okay, it means that this is lambda 1. Okay, and then this will be lambda 2. Is this clear, uh, Rohit? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. Right. And so now let's come to the point. Uh, uh, let us see some of these things, whichever we have discussed in slides in terms of some visualizations and examples. Also, as we started uh, discussing about image features, we need some features uh, which will, uh, mm, which are invariant to photometric variations like color, uh, intensity variations, in background contrast variations and so on. And we also need some features which are invariant to view, size or scale, rotation and so on. So why they are important? As we discussed in many of the computer tasks, what is more important is, say, from image to image, we want to find out the exactly similar regions. The, they may be for, say, in this example, they are using it for mosaicing probably. Okay, so this and this region are exactly same. And this region and this region are exactly same. Okay, and uh, similarly like this. So here, this may be useful for stitching the images. But as we discussed in different computer vision applications, these have a different role. But in all the computer vision applications, what is important is to establish this matching. Sometimes matching can be from template to image. Sometimes this matching can be across images, image one to image two, frame one to frame two, left image to right image. Okay, or sometimes uh, across several images of a video, frames of a video. But however, this matching, template matching, is a basic or a common uh, problem that is required in all computer vision tasks. For establishing that what is needed is, there are two kinds of methods we said, dense uh, methods where at each point we want to establish what is the nearest point or what is the closest point, closest match in the other image. Or uh, there are feature-based methods where only at a specific feature points or interest points, we would like to establish this. And for some of the tasks, it is enough to establish only at the feature points, not necessary to establish all the points, what are the best matches. Okay, if I want to make a panoramic view, okay, just three points may be sufficient if I want to make a, uh, some FN transformation. Okay, because the number of parameters to make a global transformation, maybe six, for example, if there are six parameters, each uh, pair of uh, um, corresponding points, will give me two, two uh, equations, okay? So that means this is exactly equal to this. So they give each give two equations. And like that three points, if I get hold of uh, good corresponding points, I will get all six uh, equations and I can solve for the uh, transformation matrix to see the global transformation between image one to image two. Like that in some applications, it is not necessary to find out uh, or to find the matches at each of the points, dense matching is not necessary. And then where to match is being decided or conveyed by the uh, interest point detection methods. 
like Harris Kana detector, armor ionic operator, and so on, scale invariant feature transform. So uh, this is just a follow up on our discussion. So uh, this is useful for all uh, applications. As we discussed, in tracking, stereo calibration, uh, navigation, all those things, retrieving. Uh, image retrieving means if we give an image, we want to retrieve several such images. Uh, so even for such tasks, it is useful. And we also discussed about uh, properties of a good uh, mm, uh, detector, interest point detector. We have mm, conveyed that they should be uh, invariant to geometric and photometric transformations. And they should also be uh, mm, uh, uh, easy to compute because we need to perform this as a basic operation. Mm, so if you see the image like this, then we, these are some of the points which we considered as corner points they are easy to match across images or uniquely identify in images. Even in a natural image, you can find some of the points which are unique and easy to distinguish or uh, figure uh, like match across the images. So these are points which we call it as a interest points. These are also invariant to scale, as you can see, rotation and then uh, illumination variations and so on. Because we are not matching the whole image content, we are matching the interest points around the interest points. So the content, if it is say occluded in one image, we will not be able to get that interest point, that's all. But remaining interest points will be visible. Hmm, hope you got the idea. So this is the basic idea as we discussed. In a flat region, the intensity variations in all regions is zero and all directions is zero. In a edge, along the edge, one of the direction will have high intensity variation. Another direction will have very low intensity variation at R0 intensity variation. Whereas at the corner, we have a significant intensity changes in all directions. So Muravec operator, as we discussed before, is mainly based on that. So this is essentially, if you see here, uh, this will, in whatever direction you move, uh, it will have zero variation. Whereas here, whatever we discussed will be is valid. Please also note that even for a corner point, you can see that even a single point, if you have actually, Okay, the point targets kind of things. Even there, if you move in either direction, you will have the intensity variations. So, corner points not necessarily be purely a corner points like this, but also a independent points like this. Okay, where no, they are different from the neighborhood. So, this is an exercise to find out what is the value of more effect operator. That means if you are here and if you move here, okay, what is the um, intensity variation that has happened? that we do in, that we uh, mm, identify in all directions, then we will see the, if the intensity variation in all directions uh, is high, then only we consider it as an interest point. Okay, so that means the minimum of variation in all directions is what is the measure for it being an interest point or not an interest point. So you can calculate here. So you see that from here to here, if you change, there is one change from uh, 255 to zero, and there is another change from uh, zero to 255. So given both of them, it is two times 255 square. Okay, so this, if you consider this as the measure of finding the intensity variations. Similarly, you can compute even in this case, what is the intensity variation? And so I'm not computing and spending time here, but the slides will be with you. I suggest you to figure out exactly are these values, whatever they have written, for the intensity variation between uh, patch one to patch two, are they correctly depicted or not? That will help you to understand things better. Similarly, once we identify the intensity variation across whole image, what we do for finding corner points is first we identify what is the variation. Okay, are the uh, value of Moravec operator at that instance. So previously, say you can consider two as the value of Moravec operator. And then three is the value of Moravec operator in the previous case at that center location when you move. But actually what will happen? We have seen here only one direction. We have to see the Moravec operator value in all the direction. That means you have to shift in say, uh, you have to put the uh, um, uh, patch even centered around this. Okay, like that at eight positions, eight different positions you have to center it. Uh, one, two, three, four and so on. Eight different shifts you have to take. Among all different shifts, the value of Moravec operator, okay, is equal to minimum of all Vs. Oh, v, uh, um, say, varying from Vi, I will write, I varying from 1 to 9. 
or VK, K varying from 1 to 9. That means you shift in all 8 directions. Among all 8 directions, what is the minimum value of the value of this V you get? Okay, that, that is, will be the value of Muravec Mara operator. So Muravec operator value will not be equal to uh, the value that is at one shift. You have to see all the shifts. Once you see all the shifts, the value of Muravec operator is equal to, Muravec operator value will be equal to minimum of V. Okay, for all directions, K, uh, K equal to 1 to 9. Oh, hope this is clear. So that if you find out, figure out, then the value that you can see here, here what we have listed is the Moravec operator value at each location. Say if these are all don't care points, into means don't care points, border points, you need not bother. Okay, oh, the shifts are calculated only say if we are here. Oh, so at this point, for example, how do we calculate? We put a patch here around this point. And then, okay, so I, mm, we put a three cross three patch around this point. Okay, and then keep moving one step this side, one step this side, one step this side, all sides. And see in your, when you move in either of the sides, what is the minimum variation that you can get? You can see that if you move from this uh, point here, whichever you are seeing here, in any direction, if you move, the variation will be greater than two. Uh, so uh, that means sometimes if you move this side, the value of difference, if you just consider that the intensity values are only zero and one, black means zero, white means one, if we consider the intensity values. If you move in all directions, you can see that the variation will be 3, 2, 3, 2, like that. Okay, so the minimum value of variation at this point to any other point is 2. Okay, like that, if you move away from here, the minimum value of variation will be 1. If you move from here, the minimum value of variation will be 0. Okay, so you compute yourself and verify the values that are written here. Okay, 0, they have written 0, 1, 2, 1, so on, right? So what this indicated, you move in either direction, Okay, there will be for each uh, move, you have a, some intensity gradient, intensity difference. And among that all differences, what is the minimum difference that you capture and write at the center? Okay, that value is the value of Moravec operator. Okay, if you upper, apply a threshold on this, what we see finally is there are two corner points. Okay, so which are the corner points now? The corner points will be one corner point. Okay, and then the second corner point will be, this is the second corner point. Okay, so if we just put the threshold as so, um, above one or two, then what you have is only two corner points in this image. Hmm, hope this is clear. Uh, so this is clearly identifying the corner points. As you can see, which are the corner points are identified as corner points by Moravec operator. But the problem with Moravec operator is it is computationally intensive. As you can see, for each shift, you have to explicitly calculate and so on. So the idea of uh, finding out in all directions and finding out the minima is also something like can be also effectively done through uh, kind of correlation. You can see that a single patch, okay, if you correlate with all directions, wherever you have a minimum correlation, that, that minimum correlation is what you are trying to see that that's a, <clears throat> that is a corner point. That means any patch that will have minimum correlation with all its neighboring shifted patches is a corner point. Okay, so you can also interpret this in terms of the correlation. Okay, Mag maximum variation. Okay, minimum of max maximum of minimum variations. Okay, you are finding all variations. That minimum ha itself has to be greater than a threshold. Okay, that means that it has to be greater than a threshold. Minimum has to be high. Okay, that's the one way of identifying kernel point. Or the correlation has to be uh, low. That's the other way of identifying kernel point. Okay, so then we have seen that uh, Harris Carnot detector has formulated it nicely as a uh, mathematical problem track uh, or optimization problem. Then uh, it also has added advantage of using a window function. Window function is giving different weight in the patch. Um, uh, different pixels are given different weightages within the patch through the window function. Uh, so this can be given a Gaussian weight in such a way that the center pixel in the patch when we uh, have a patch. So center pixel may be given more importance than the neighboring pixels or 
uh, you can also give uniform weightage. If you give uniform weightage, this is as if without giving a weightage, okay, as we have been doing before. So we have seen these mathematical uh, steps to arrive at finally the uh, measure uh, EU comma V in terms of matrix M. Yeah. And then once you identify the eigenvalues of matrix, they can be nicely interpreted to identify the slow directions of slowest and fastest changes. Okay, so and then the slowest change has to be high for a corner point. So as we have discussed before, uh, for an edge operator, one of them, lambda one or lambda two will be much higher than lambda two, or lambda two will be much, uh, lambda one may be much higher than lambda two. So one of them will be much different than others. So in that case, what will happen? The uh, corner's measure given by Harris oh, will have actually negative value because lambda one plus lambda two will be higher, much higher than lambda one into lambda two. Okay, if there is an asymmetry or if one of them is much higher than other, this will be much higher, then R will be negative for edges. Okay, whereas for uh, flat regions, R is close to zero for flat regions. And then what is the corner uh, for corner points? R is much higher. Okay, more bigger. Corner points. Okay. Okay. So this is a, but, uh, and the elegance what we discussed is you can get in terms of trace and determinant. No need even to compute the eigenvalues. Okay, so here it, the things are shown very clearly. Mod R is small. Okay, R is a negative. Oh, R is uh, greater than zero, hmm? whichever we just have discussed. Okay, if you find for an image, the, all the eigen, all the uh, um, R values. Okay, so what we need to do now, essentially at each pixel, you need to find first formulate matrix M using IX, okay, IX square, IX, IY, Okay, I, I, X, I, Y, and I, Y square. Okay, this gives essentially based on gradients, we are formulating a matrix. So this gives the variations. Okay, in X and Y directions, I'm consolidating them in terms of the whole directions. And the eigenvalues of this will give us the measure R. And if R is very high, we assume that it's a corner point. So first what we do is we find out the values of R at each point, and then we make a threshold to identify what are all the possible values Okay, of um, for corner points. You may get many points now, if you find like that. Then what we what is the next step usually is, we apply a, trick, a step called non-maxima suppression. Okay, the reason being, see, if you see that uh, around a corner point, many other points also may possibly ha have high R value, but it is not necessary to keep all of them. Corner point are a uniquely distinguishable point, uh, mm, one of them is good enough in the neighborhood and remaining are weaker in are lesser distinguishable from that point. Okay. So what we do is in the neighborhood, we apply a non-maxima suppression. That means we take a patch three by three patch or five by five patch in this, whichever is the maximum value that only we retain remaining all we throw away or we take a patch we keep sliding that patch or five cross five of can five cross five region. In that, if center pixel is higher than all other values, we retain. Otherwise, we put it to zero. Okay, that means we do that same at all locations. So here also five cross five patch. Okay, if the center pixel is higher than all others, we keep we retain it as a possible corner point. Otherwise, we throw it out. And that means we put zero there. Okay, so that's referred to as non-maxima suppression. Each of the center point in that phi cross phi patch, is it a maximum or not? If it is maximum, just keep it as a possible uh, a corner point. If it is not a maximum in that lo local region, then throw it as non-local, no maxima. Okay, sorry, it's not a local maxima. No? So this local maxima will help us to identify only few corner points. So hope I don't know whether you people are able to see any corner points here. Okay, but there are corner points. Hmm? So I think you have to believe me. Okay, so there are some points where it is still marking as corner points. Okay, I think you can see probably uh, in a better uh, hmm, computer screen. 
So now what has happened? Many of them are thrown out because they're all no, not local maximas. Okay, because if you see in a window, all will not be maxima, right? Only one will be maxima in that local region. That is good enough to distinguish. Okay, very well from the neighborhood. So essentially now, just to bring out the mathematical steps, first compute IX and IY, formulate matrix M, and then convolve with a Gaussian. Why is this convolving with Gaussian is coming? Can anybody tell why this step is coming? Convolving with a Gaussian while finding the corner points in Harris. And to keep the central pixel more important. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but that where is, is it is obtained through W? Okay, we have actually W convolution with IX square. Okay, IX, IY. Oh, IX, IY. IY square, right? So this W is what is bringing the uh, this convolution. Okay, this is the uh, Gaussian. Oh, so the matrix M, in fact, is W convolved with this. It is a window function. So we are giving more importance to central pixel. If we don't choose to do that, we can skip that also. Then find out the possible, uh, for all, find out the values of R. Okay, corner is measure. Once we find it, find out the non, uh, find out the local maxima. Okay, throw out the non maxima in the log. Mm local neighborhood. Mm, so this is essentially some mathematical uh, description of the same. Find out A, B, C and then formulate matrix M. Okay, and then simply find out actually uh, R. And then you see that uh, the it's a uh, threshold R first. After thresholding, perform non-maxima suppression. Suppress the non-maxima or find out the local maxima. And then you just declare them as corner points. This is also called as uh, Plessy corner point detector. Harris or Plessy corner point detector. So results, as you can see, the results are like this. You can see most of the corners are detected through Harris corner detector. Mm, you can see that very well detected, some of them. But this has a limitation. This is the uh, one of the very, as I mentioned, it's the one of the fastest and simplest corner point detector. The limitation of this is, if you rotate an image, okay, and find out corner points, you may get many spurious corner points. Even on natural image, you can see that it is very well detecting the corner points. So now if you want to perform matching, or if you want to identify what this uh, object overall is, okay, many of the things can be done effectively by taking the only the feature point information. Okay, around these feature points, if you take, okay, across images, you can match. Okay, and uh, you can identify where exactly this point is in the other image and so on. Even describing a object with feature points also is done. Say for example, car or not. If you take a couple of feature points and then we can say uh, whether it is that object or not. As I mentioned, if you rotate, the corner points that you get will be quite different. That is referred to as an isotropic response. It is not isotropic in the sense that with rotation things will vary. Okay, because it's not supposed to vary, right? So if you rotate, these are all spurious corner points. Okay, so that should not happen. But because of the digitization problem, or these are all uh, after rotation, this is not a continuous signal, right? It's a discrete signal. So rotation also will have its artifacts in terms of uh, interpolation and other things. Uh, and further uh, computation of IX and IV, etc. Uh, on this will yield some false. Uh, positives in the sense that false corner points. So it will have more false positives. Now the next step. So once we find the corner points, what is the next step to be done? Say so assume that this is one corner point. Okay, and then this is one corner point, and this is another corner point, and this is another corner point, and this is another corner point, corner point. Similarly, in another image also, we are able to find some of these corner points. Now, what do you think is the next step? So you may find literally some of the corner points as well. Once you find the corner points, assume that I want to see whether this is a truck. Okay, is this image same as this image or not? I want to identify image one and image two, are they similar? I1 and I2, are they similar or different? Hmm, how do I do is, we take actually patches around these corner points now. Okay, so you can, as you can see here, the patch can be taken in a rectangular fashion or in the way that is appropriate. It can be done 
different approaches will take patches in a different manner okay some of them takes with circles ellipses okay so rotated rectangles squares all those things uh, but we need to take a patch around that region so they have some guidance why this has to be taken in that way some of them use orientation around that corner point also to select a patch some of them doesn't take care uh, of the orientation and directly uh, take the patch once you take the patches what we do is we uh, mm, we try to see some see here also they assume that here there are five feature points here assume that here also say um, possibly five feature points to decide whether this i1 and i2 are same or not what i am planning to do is i want to match uniquely these five to five see sometimes what may happen among this five only three may be correct matches okay and remaining may not be correct matches so even if i match three of them three uh, corresponding point with very high confidence what do i mean by very high confidence that means if i perform correlation see you can see that you can also bring this patch to a um, orientation uh, free direction that means you can naturally correct for orientation and take the patch here also it may be in different orientation right so there are some methods which will help us to normalize or look the patch with respect to to a standard orientation and then take the patch once i take from the say from this and from this uh, um, uh, image i see that both patches match by 90% that means say if i find correlation it is 0.9 okay uh, if i find correlation means a normalized cross correlation the value is 0.9 then it is a high confidence match this uh, say here i am able to find out no match so zero confidence here also zero confidence here may be 0.95 very high confidence here it is 0.8 uh, it's a reason somewhat uh, high confidence reasonable confidence if the sum match is 0.5 itself it is a low confidence okay 0.2 it's even low confidence like that uh, so based on that if i have at least a reasonable number of matches say if i take around this usually what will happen the number of corner points are not just 5 and 10 okay they will be in order of 500s or even more so if we take 500 points here and then again 400 points here okay among that if we see all combinations because we don't know where exactly if we know some information that this point will be in the neighborhood of this point only in the other image okay so we can only search in this region what are all the matches but if we don't know any such information we have to search across the whole image that means 500 to 400 these many combinations we have to search and then see which is the best match for each of these 500s we have to see which is the best match here okay and then see that these are those best matches if i take 10 best matches or 100 best matches are they their correl um, correlation scores above some threshold so that will give me a guarantee on how close an image one to image two for doing all this what we need is each patch has to be say around a key point now i have taken a patch this patch has to be described well what do we mean by describing a patch we need to find out a uh, good feature or attribute describing image patches okay so what are the good features to uh, describe or attributes to describe a patch that that question comes and these features has to be as we mentioned before invariant to uh, rotation scale viewpoint intensity variations contrast and so on all those aspects day and night conditions weather conditions all those things okay so given that what are the good features is a question so one features that we discussed before are finding edges but edges if we find say in a given image if you find edges or whatever here okay so you will have actually edges in two dimensions how do we represent them even edge is a binary information how do we represent them so what we discussed in the earlier classes is that the angle of edges will help us better in terms of describing okay what is the information content in this patch 
So you can see that the angle of edges, if you see, these are all say zero to some say probably you know, zero minus 15 to 15 degrees. You can assume that it is a some, uh, you can see just if you see angles at different, different pixel locations, the angle of edges that itself visualizes like a uh, wheel. And that shape information is visualized very well by angle of edges. So angle of edges, uh, orientation of edges, as we mentioned, are very good features. Now the question next comes, how do we crisply represent these features? So if you have a patch yeah, like this, so you may have actually 10 cross 10 or uh, say 20 cross 20 patch. So within this 20 cross 20 patch, if you get the features, the features will be 400 cross one. So these 400 cross one features, so how do I represent well? Uh, so should I represent, if I represent them, in terms of say angles zero degrees, okay, 90 degrees or 55 degrees and so on. So I will have in this patch all the angles ranging from whatever zero to 180 degrees. But there should be some kind of nice crisp representation for that. That can be done through histogram, forming the histogram. How do we form the histogram? First to find out the gradients, the angle of gradients. Then after finding the angle of gradients, say there will be 400 angles of gradients at uh, in a given patch. Okay, for all these 400, you form a histogram, ranging from zero to 10, one, one bin. Okay, 10 to 20 degrees, another bin, and then 180 degrees, up to 180 degrees, which you have, nine bins you will have. Right, hope this is clear. And then you see how many are the count in zero to 10 degrees. And then what is the count in 10 to 20 degrees? What is the count in 20 to 30 degrees? and then count in uh, 30 to uh, 40 degrees and so on. Okay, like that you find the uh, count in each, each of these bins. So these will give me, give us an understanding of what is the dominant orientation in that patch. In this patch, if you see dominant orientation can be some say uh, close to minus 10 degrees. In this uh, dominant orientation can be 45 degrees. Okay, or say 45 to 135 degrees. In this dominant orientation, say, um, maybe some, uh, in each patch, it will be different. In this dominant orientation, maybe 45 degrees. Okay, like that. So in different patches, you will have different, different dominant orientations. That will give an understanding of what the information content in that patch is. So given this, finding out the orientation of edges, And then finding out the histogram of orientation of edges is a good feature. Okay, so we will discuss that also. We will see that also with a little more details in these slides now. The advantage of histogram of orientation gradients is uh, that it is invariant to small shifts, rotations, small rotations, and intensity variations. Why is it uh, invariant to intensity variations? Can some of you tell? Why the histogram of orientation gradients okay, is invariant to intensity variations? And it is also invariant to shifts, small orientations, uh, etc. See here in this image versus in this image, they both show seven. If I just represent them in fig pixels, what will happen? See, this is a five, say one, two, three, four, six cross. Four image, six cross, five image. Okay, so it thirty cross one vector I will get from this, right? So if I represent directly the pixel information as features, what will happen? Initially zero 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 for this row, and then second row if I put here one 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 zero. Okay, I'm just stacking the information wherever the black is there. I'm saying one. Wherever the white is there, I'm saying zero. Okay, no intensities in white regions. In black regions, I'm saying there is an intensity. Okay, so that's how I'm just marking here. So if I stack them into a 30 cross one vector, what will happen? This, whatever the first image, image one, corresponding to that whatever vector I write, it will be like this, right? Now, similarly, assume that I will write a vector corresponding to image two also. The question now is, will these vector corresponding to image one and vector corresponding to image two, will they be same or different? They will be different. Sir. They will be different. The reason being this is also zero, 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 fine. 
here but it start with zero one 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 okay and then whatever so you see even up to here if you see also this row is completely different from this row is it not so what the reason is the reason being actually the small shifts also will matter when i convert from when we convert from two dimension to one dimension correct so but whereas if you find out the uh, so you see here these four and these four okay so this the if you find out the i1 minus i2 it will be higher only okay does not really reflect the similarity however now if you see actually histogram uh, find out the say uh, angle uh, of edges okay say here all zero degrees these are all zero degrees and these are all say minus 45 degrees assume that okay and again here zero degrees minus 45 degrees okay assume like that so in that case if i just here they have put a very uh, um, uh, histogram precisely but let us assume that only zero degrees and minus 45 degrees are there now if i see the histo the uh, orientation histograms okay so for i1 the histogram will be i will write h1 okay h1 being the histogram for uh, first image h2 being the histogram for second image i will just note 0 45 degrees 90 degrees okay and then one uh, 180 degrees and so on okay just i will note only this now the histogram for both of these things will it be same or different Oh, histogram for first image will be you will have a count of four here okay and then at 45 also you have a count of four remaining all zeros for second image also it will be what oh, four and three here also four and three right so will the histogram be same or different same yeah the histogram of orientation gradients is same Okay, that means histogram of angle values, if you see, are the same. Because essentially with small shifts or with translations, the orientations are the, say, uh, um, frequency of orientations doesn't change. So thus it is invariant to uh, shifts and small orientations. See, small orientation, why I am saying is, we are binning it here. All 0 to 255 or 0 to 45, we are put all 0 to 25, for example, probably 22.5. 0 to 22.5, we're putting in same bin. So if there is a rotation by five degrees, it doesn't really matter. Okay, most of the things will fall in the same bin. Okay, so if the bin size is bigger, small, the orientation is lesser than that half of the big size, bin size, roughly doesn't matter. And so this is a nice way of capturing the information, preserving the shape information. And so this is widely used, okay, in computer vision. So just the processor wise, what we do is we first find out the gradients in X and Y directions. And then we find out the magnitude and angle of gradients. Okay, so what is this operator minus one, zero, one? What is this doing? Can anybody tell quickly? Tell quickly. Why minus one, zero, one will find out the gradient in X direction? If we consider this as X direction. Okay, so it essentially finds the gradient in Y direction, not in X direction. No, because any change here, Okay, it will find in y direction, whatever the change, it will find. It will find i y. It will find i x. Okay, so why does it find? What do we do with this operator? Minus 1, 0, 1. You may give an image. We convolve. Yeah, we convolve with the image. Okay, so this is the uh, 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 filter in x direction. Okay, and filter in y direction. Okay, so and then what we do? So if I want to get IY, uh, what I do is uh, this uh, mm, filter, whatever, let's write FY and FX. Okay, FY, we convolve with I. And then similarly, IX, if you want to get FX, you convolve with I, right? And you get the gradient information now. You get uh, either GX, GY, or SX, XY, or IX, IY, whatever baby the notation. Then get the magnitude. And then get the angle. Once you get the angle, what do we do? We do that at each pixel. So you have now the angle at each pixel, right? Then what we do is there are different options. See, for the whole image, you can make a single histogram. Okay, 0 to 180 degrees. 
and then make whatever zero to three sixty also you can make. If it doesn't matter for you, moving this the like a positive direction or negative direction, zero to three one eighty is good enough. If you would like to take a differently uh, gradient from positive to negative and negative to positive as different, then you need to take all zero to three sixty direct degrees. If you make for the whole image, you get a if it's a, say for example nine bits. Then the whole image will have a vector of only nine cross one, nine cross one descriptor for the whole image. Now oh, that will not really depict the information very well, because the whole image information we are trying to capture in just the <coughs> nine cross one vector, and the say if you have a uh, person like this, local variations and global variations may be uh, not very well um, considered. In sense that you are only considering the global variation, you are not considering the local variations. Okay, so taking a, a histogram of orientation gradients for the whole image is not very good or necessary in most of the cases. What we do is we take each four cross four region. Okay, and for that four cross four, you take a histogram of orientation gradients vector. Okay, so and like that you do for each patch. So what this will give local orientations, I can see very clearly here. And in the local, which is the dominant orientation, that also I can see. Okay, here dominant orientation is say minus forty five degrees. Okay, here dominant orientation is say probably forty five degrees. Here dominant orientation is uh, say zero degrees, and so on. So I can see very well clearly the dominant orientations as well. That will help me to describe the image or the object very well. And so we will conclude here. So in the next class, we will discuss little more. But while concluding, what I would uh, say is. This is the first method uh, in two thousand five or so, which used the histogram of orientation gradients for extracting the feature of the whole image in the patches, like the pa patch-wise histogram of orientation gradient, as I mentioned, and stack them to formulate a big histogram of orientation vector, and used it for human non-human classification. Okay, so this is the, in fact, one of the celebrated method. That has demonstrated the ability to distinguish human non-human images very well with a nice feature vector, uh, which will give the shape information. That is histogram of orientation gradients. We will discuss this in the next class and then move on. Thank you. Then.